attention. Oh, that's gonna be a little dark because it's kind of late. But Honestly, just be as soon as you're set and everything's working, we can just go live. They're jumping straight into the game. You ready? Okay. We're gonna go live to us in five, four, three. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Shadi Zeddy Hannah, and I'm joined tonight by Ancient Angel. He'll be helping us out on the cast tonight as we get into our game today and i think there were a few little audio issues just getting set up into the, the game so please do let us know if there's any issues in the chat as we progress uh with tonight's match as the players did get started rather quickly <laughs> with tonight's game um but we, we we always like a little bit of a sense of urgency don't we angel absolutely i mean listen I, between me misplacing some start game buttons uh, versus just diving straight into the action I, i'm ready to just dive straight in get things underway <clears throat> we got an awesome game tonight. NECC versus Grand Canyon University here for Keanu Esports. Huskies on their home map of the set. Let's see what they can get done in this pistol round. Yeah, and uh, you know, as we've discussed previously, the the lane change did come out for the Huskies, as they actually have uh, uh, swapped over Bondo and Savo, um, and a very early aggressive mid start coming out here from GCU, as they sent so many members into that that B lobby area and GCU coming out ahead as I think Bondo just whiffed a couple shots uh, onto the opposing duelist he just wasn't able to find the best in the 1v1s and uh, that's going to be GCU taking a very early and a very dominant round one victory here against Kiana. Yeah I mean it was super dominant just being able to send in those flashes or that flash and dash combo in towards tiles it just proved itself so successfully on the side of GCU. Bondo and Senja not really able to find any... Well, Senja was actually able to find a couple picks on a response, but by then it was like a 2v5. Super difficult to recover in a pistol round. So now, going into the save round, we want to see Keanu kind of off to a, a more defaulty start. We see Savo in towards B lobby as the rest of the team is just looking for a couple picks. Again, it's an anti-eco. You don't need to be doing anything too crazy. Tiny with the shock dart, is able to remove the KJ utility in towards mid as Bondo swings, isn't able to find Matt. As now Chris M looking in through main Tiny, still on this hunt. Matt in the scope, doesn't find Tiny. That's the first, it's now a 3v4. It's that first crucial opening pick if you wanna even talk about a thrifty at this point. As Savo lurks in towards mid, 
There's three players here ready to gun him down without any hesitation. Volt, he sneaks through that dark cover. He doesn't. That yeah, one's tiny. The GCU, you know, they have way better guns and they're trying to force that advantage, but also knowing that taking those close range fights against these pistols is how they risk potentially dropping the round. A nice little shot from Sipe onto Chris M, though. We'll take him down. And Tiny and Salvor are going to look to try to get this plant down here on this A site. So at least get the bomb down and get those additional credits. Yeah, you've got the bomb down, and now you're in a 2v4. Savo and Tiny looking to steal this round away from GCU. Shock darts coming through. Retake up next. There's that fragment out. Flash as well. Savo still locked towards hell. Is able to find the first onto Dino. It's now a 1v3. He's not able to close it out. Nader and Volt combined to give GCU the anti-eco. Yeah, I mean, this was kind of their round to win, and especially on a map like Ascent, where it's already defender-sided, you're already, you know, on a gun advantage, you've already come out of the gate swinging, and you've put that pressure onto the Huskies so early on in this game. It's, uh, you know, the best thing, the the absolute best-case scenario for Kiano is to do what they did and try to take some guns away, but, you know, two out of five isn't going to put a huge dent in GCU's e uh, economy, and they should be able to carry over a few handy little rifles here uh, into round number three. I think going into round three as well, like when you're looking at the kind of momentum that Kiano have been able to build here, you are able to get that spike plant. So that does give you about 300 credits per player just to be able to work with. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And now moving into this anti-eco, it's really going to be about how clean Kiano can do this. There's a super aggressive push by Volt out of B-Main. Bondo looking in towards this A site, wants to go fast, doesn't catch Matt on the swing though. So that's another pick going GCU's way. And now, as that dark cover comes in to try and reset the round for Keanu, it's not looking too, too good here. Chris yeah. M. Bondo really is just getting beat out on all of these 1v1s right now, and I think it's really hurting the Huskies' chances of getting onto site when they're losing their duelist so early. Uh, you, you know, we did talk about the roll swap, and we did talk about that adjustment, but, uh, you know, we don't want to make it sound like Bondo doesn't play duelist. It's, it's actually what he mained for... For years before shifting over to this IGL position um, so I, I think right now it's just kind of having a little bit of a rough start in this game and not being able to find uh, those 1v1 duels and uh, hopefully they can start coming through for the Huskies because it's it's been a big difference maker in a lot of these rounds very early on yeah it feels a little like um, I want to say like overexcited right like Bondo's just so eager to take this first duel Volt though now on this site take is able to find Savo and now, Tiny trying to jiggle out Volt from the site. Sype is able to find Senja. Tiny and Chris M alone. It's a 1v3 clutch for Tiny. He found the first. He gets off the plant, but Sype just barely able to close it out. It's a 3k to give GCU their third. Yeah, I, I think Tiny just had a slight misread at the pace there. He drops the site, puts his gun away to start planting the bomb, and I don't think he realized that both his teammates got beat out on stairs. You know, he had his crosshair in the perfect position. He was ready for it, but I think the adjustment time just really uh, threw him off there, and it's unfortunate because we've definitely seen him clutch up in those situations. It's just an unfortunate misread of, of the pace and situation in that game. For sure, and I, I fortunately, I feel really bad because Chris M., in that solo lurk position towards mid, really tried to have a lot of impact, but with the rest of the team just falling flat to that sight hold from Volt, nothing really got done. Yeah. Sheriff's out. Oh, I was gonna say already the operator online for Matt, but I think that op shot just went out actually as it was the peak from Tiny. Tiny was able to jiggle and force that out and actually got a body tag it looks like as, as well, just getting a little bit of chip damage. So they do know that op is leading B side. Yeah, it's super important to know when you have that op, Leaning over towards B as Bondo looks to peek in from main. I think they just want to try and brute force this killjoy. He crosses to wine, clears it out. Any utility from Senja here to help him peek in towards main would be huge. There's a dark cover to give them a pocket. Chris M towards tree as well. This side execute is ready to go. The Bondo dash. dashed into the site, isn't able to find Nader. Oh man, Nader just holding. The rest of the team was stuck towards a main. Chris M not able to take out Dino on that swing. And I, I, what do you do here if you're Savo and Tiny? I think Savo is really just going to look for that pick on those rotations. You know, he uh, he makes the intelligent choice to not force that first kill and see if he can just catch this operator on that rotation. Uh, maybe use that to swing the round. But 
Um, he's gonna he's gonna be stuck between a rock and a hard place in a minute here if he doesn't make the right read fast enough. Finds one, but the knives come out, and there goes Sava. Oh, but Tiny able to find Matt. That's huge. And try and get this plant down. It's not gonna come through. The flash gets faded, but Volt takes off Tiny's head for the fourth. Yeah, this is um this is a big difference from uh, Saturday's game where the Huskies went 12 and 0 on the attack on this end. <laughs> it's a little different. Um, it's probably more in line with what we anticipate from an ascent defense, and GCU is showing us that they are a little bit better than some of the other opponents we've played all year. Um, you know, going into this game, we knew that they were a strong roster and that they uh, would give us a little bit, probably the 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 toughest opponent that we have in the NECC Champions Division. But right now, they're 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 putting in work on the defensive side. <laughs> Yeah, and ascent defense is not something to really be invested or too messed with, too trifed with, you could say. And and we're really seeing it now. Keanu just opting to play a bit slow, watch for any sort of aggressive peaks to come out. Mid take seems to be where Keanu wants to lean, as Cat has been resmoked here. Aggressive peak from. I really like this play from the Huskies. They 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 played their timings perfectly. They know that you know their opponents. They've seen them go super aggressive and fight for space really aggressively. That if they just chilled out and played a slower default, that their opponents would start to pre-rotate. Um, that smoke does come out. That deep smoke does come out uh, from the side of Grand Canyon University. But Savo just baiting out that flash timing and then using it to immediately cross into Cubby here. Uh, they've got such good spacing for audios right now. Like they can hear anything uh, from anywhere on the map. It's tons of information gained for the Huskies. It's a lot of info gained, but nothing about the position of this op, which is ready for heaven. Wine cleared out by the fragment. The jiggle comes out for Savo. So does the Hunter's Fury. Matt's op able to find Senja as this site he comes in. Bondo deep into the site gets taken out by the Sheriff. Dino onto Savo towards Tree. And now Chris M and Tiny. It's another 2v5. Chris M goes down. Tiny is alone. Spike's not with him. It has to be a save called. What or is Keanu. happening right now for the Huskies? This is crazy. I this 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 defending the CT jet is just one v nining right now is what it feels like. You you can't push into them. You can't push around them. You can't push for them. You know she puts the off away. She whips out a deagle and she takes you down with that too. Like this, it feels like there's no options playing into Matt. He really do be cooking up right now. Eight kills for him already on round five. Matt cooking up something nasty on this jet. I mean. 5-0, Op still out, Eco for the rest of the Huskies here, and it's it's not looking too great. I, I think the biggest issue that they've run into so far is just they have no answer for, for Matt. They have no way to kind of deal with him, and he's been able to be such a nuisance with this operator now. Seems to be a B hit outright. Op shot does miss as Bondo goes wide. The chase ensues with the stinger. This is a very fast sight hit. Volt, though, able to find one. There's three. They know there's three on this site. They're going to keep pushing anyways. Tiny on this Vandal. Now opting to send in that Owl drone towards Market. Gets closed out by the door as the door breaks. Dino pushes lane and is able to find Tiny. Sipe onto Chris M. It's now another 1v5. This time for Savo. Nothing comes through. 6-0. and oh. Huskies are down a peg and a half here. Yeah, that's a that's a tough round to lose, and the timeout will come through from Chris M, who's kind of taken on this role of IGLing for the roster ever since Bondo moved over to that duelist role. Um, you know, it's 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 really this 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 roster change has been about kind of putting the players back on you know what their 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 tendencies are. It's not necessarily what they've practiced or what they've trained, but what they what they really feel more comfortable on as players. But I think you know it's it's still a pretty new change and getting used to that you know relearning your sets and your rhythms and making sure everybody's on the same page about how they want to do things uh, is challenging and especially when you're going into your gcu i believe it's their map pick i'm going to confirm that with the NECC uh, pick order chat right now uh, but i believe you know going into the opposing map pick them having defender side first uh, on the ascent uh you know it's a uh, it's tricky, and especially when, you know, this is a map that the Huskies have done well on, but they've done well on with different roles, right? You know, the, traditionally this is Bondo where he gets to whip out the KO, and you have Savo opping on the jet, the op role being really his most comfortable. So a uh, pretty significant um, alteration to adapt to, and I think, you know, it's just, uh, this is um, uh, early days, early days for this adaptation. Yeah, but 
early days is great, but when we just saw you 13-0 with these exact same roles, it's a little concerning that Kano really aren't able to find their rhythm early. I mean, obviously, it we think of a as being a defender-sided map, so if you're able to string together five here, you know, all in all, good half. And it's especially good considering the circumstances that you're starting 6-0 and down. Now that you're on rifles, let's see what you're cooking up. It's an aggressive mid take by Bondo and Senja. Volt on the spray. Nothing too crazy just yet. And now a pretty slow a pretty slow start to this one though. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it's not actually a full buy for the Huskies. I think two of them are on half rifles. Um, it's what it looked like, or maybe they were able to just squeeze it out with light armor. There, it's not, it's not a. They didn't have full economy going into this one, so that might be something to keep note of. Is that reduced armor stacking there? Um, but I do like the setup here from the Huskies. They've taken complete mid control and they're playing the cut out and choke out these rotations. Oh, uh, and that was actually Nader spotted out by Bondo. Bondo will find the first frag of the game, or the first frag of the round, and he's going to push himself immediately onto switch to try to take control of doorway. Uh, he's going to get oh. knocked out by GCU Volt here, though. Yeah, Volt. Able to take out Bondo with that Hunter's Fury as this B hit comes in. Savo now has to sit post plant playing from logs. No ults really available for this retake. Watch this rewrap from Chris though in towards mid. Savo goes down to Sipen logs. So it's the clear. The retake has started. Chris M able to find Volt. Senja able to find Sipe, but Matt and Dino 2v1 now as they've traded out everyone else except for Tiny. He gets flashed. He has to retreat to stairs as now the retake comes in. Dino holding Matt, able to take him down. It's now 7-0 up for GCU. And oh my goodness, Keanu just can't find a round. That was really their round to win. I, I feel like they had it all perfect and ready to go. Sipe clearing out Savo was definitely unfortunate, but I think Chris M just overlurked. He really needed to speed up his flank timing, especially as those rotations started to come through from CT. I think he was just really worried about getting caught out um, in Pizza when he was on that rotation. But had he just picked it up just a tad faster and he was able to get onto Sipe before they cleared Savo, that entire round goes very, 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 very differently. And unfortunately, that, that quarter of a second, you know, one second delay in that push is makes the difference between you know uh, Keanu's first win and their seventh consecutive loss yeah and, and now we really see that eco hurting bondo using that blade storm to try and get something together with tiny and a guardian senja and savo both on sheriffs and chris i'm trying to hero vandal trying to give the team some sort of stability to back on like it just again it feels like the rhythm's gone and bondo that's a huge first pick to find if you're matt the blade storm gets taken out of this round it is not a factor at all anymore forget the blade storm the only entry tool that the huskies really have i mean this is a scent and you've just lost your dash and flash uh carry you know who's gonna pull those uh pull those crosshairs away who's gonna pull that attention away and especially into this offer now matt can just stay cr posed up onto main uh, you can't really get through sight anymore your only tool is your flashes and you've only got two of them uh, this is this is a doomed scenario for the huskies this is not the pick that you want to find first savo trying to now deal with all of nader's utility in towards b with that sheriff in hand as it seems it's going to be a b commit here we go volt Trying to swing out market, it doesn't come through. It said it's Nader out from CT. He's able to find one, but Senja and Savo each get entries. Now Sype on the site. It's actually a fake. Chris M towards A. Savo with that Guardian now has to back off. Senja in tow. Plant comes down from Chris M. It's a desperate, desperate attempt at a round here. The swing from mid coming through. Dino able to find that first onto Senja. Savo in towards mid now. Just trying to hold. Just trying to stay alive. Does he get cleared currently? Yes, he does. And now it's Chris M alone. 1v3 with it all to do. He doesn't get the spray. And that means GCU is up to 8-0. Uh, so, so, so close for the Huskies. 
Chris, I think, really had the, uh, the right idea there with that alting to that weak side and, uh, you know, just needed to be uh, positioning that crosshair just a little better. I think he, he really wasn't anticipating on getting cleared out, but I think Sype has proven round to round that he will clear everything. You know, it doesn't matter. My teammate's staring at it. I got I got, I got got my, my webcam locked onto the site. I've got three, six security cameras, two security guards watching it. I'm going to clear it anyways. It doesn't matter. Sype is always checking his corners, and I feel like you just have to prepare for that. Uh, in that gunfight really 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 unfortunate that the huskies couldn't close that one out because they had their timing so close with that rotation yeah it was just it's so tragic now you're down 8-0 again we talk about the rounds and, and the round differentials you can't know at this point you really need to cling to anything it's a straight b main aggression it's a brawl in the b site bondo's able to find two senja does eventually go down but that was just his null command, so he does get revived. Chris M is down, though, so smokes are out. It has to be this commit. Bondo dashes into sight. He doesn't know that it's clear yet, but he's about to fully clear it out. Savo able to find one onto Volton towards mid, which leaves it as a 2v4 on this retake. Dino and Sight. Dino has an off. If he can find one here, that would be huge, but they're not giving him that attention. He takes the peek, but Bondo just trying to jiggle it out. He knows that the off is there. The paranoia comes out, and now... As they entered the site, Tiny alone in lane, the flash goes through, and Tiny takes two to find the first for Keanu. Oh, Keanu getting on the board here is absolutely massive. It's not going to make a huge dent in the economy, but it's good for the morale. And forget just the morale here. We can still force an 8-4 half. It's not ideal. You know, 5-7 is definitely like the dream attacking onto an ascent. But if you can get that fourth round, go 4-8, go pretty neutral on the half, you know, you can give yourself a little bit of breathing room going into the attacking side. So really, it's about how can Keanu maintain this momentum going into round number 10. They need to win this round for this last round to have mean, made any difference in the results of this match. Yeah, it's such a very, very dangerous game. Is There's that smoke. It comes out a little bit late for Matt. So, you know, it does get tagged up just a little bit. Is going to have to fall away here. Owl Drone. Allowing Bondo to scale up mid, Savo, on that B site. Just trying to play the game of, are we really going B or not? I think the answer, as the rest of GCU is soon to find out, it is not. It's instead this A hit, and Bondo going huge, gets the second one while blind. It gives them the site. It's now a 3v5 on this retake, and these hits have been looking so cohesive now from Keanu. This is what they've been missing. They've just been missing that ability to death ball it out. Tiny holding this crossfire with Bondo. Nader isn't able to find anything yet. The flashes come through. Matt's able to find that first onto Tiny. He tries to get a rifle in his hands. He swings around. Oh. Bondo gets traded out. But it's a second now for Keanu, and I think a crucial one at that. It feels like it feels like you know the first half of this half was like Keanu's little brother playing, and then you know you get to round seven. And they or get to round nine, I should say. And they hand over the controller and they're like, "Big bro, please pick this up for me." And that's kind of what it's really looked like. Is you've gone from having these executes where Bondo's getting his head taken off before he even gets through main to rounds where he's going two on the round. Tiny's picking up a bunch on the cleanup. They're 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 taking care of the site guys and they've locked down the post plant before their opponents have even rotated through mid. It's a totally different look for this team uh, going into round number eleven. Yeah, it's a completely different look. It is now, you know. Round number 11, again, if we can look at an 8-4 half here with Keanu grabbing the momentum of the last four, getting that last kind of third of this first half here, it, it looks really good. It, it does. It looks promising. But it's just a slow default. Again, Keanu, this is what they're kind of known for, for on their attack, so to speak, is just being able to slow default out, kind of figure out where are players playing, what is the defense like, and then Chris M being able to read around that and, and trying to make a, a distinct call. A smoke comes in towards A main. It's going to be on the rest of Keanu to decide whether or not they want to push through this. Bondo has now cleared out wine. No one gets tagged up by that, by that zero point. And that's going to be huge as this execute comes in. It means the op is not on site. In fact, no one's on site to defend this. Bondo already cleared out everything. It's going to be Senja to plant soon. Oh, but he's able to find Chris M. Matt does get traded out after one, but that's such a huge first pick. Chris M has been a massive pillar. Sype able to trade out one for one. So we get another one for one trade, but now Dino able to take out Bondo. It's Savo towards Tree. Tiny playing that Hunter's Fury from main. It forces Dino off the plant. There's another tag. 
It's a double tag, actually. Nader's able to find Tiny, but Volt has to get off the spike to deal with Savo. Nader's able to take it out. And I think that means it's now nine up for GCU. Uh, so unfortunate there. Savo, I think, just needed to play the patience to wait for that bomb tap. They had them dead to rights and just got a little bit eager wanting to find that last kill. You know, you're kind of on heat after those first two frags. You really want to just keep going and keep the momentum high. But restabilizing, they've already committed to playing for the bomb tap. You just need to stick to that call, commit to what the plant game plan is, and, and, and really play your timings there. So GCU, good on them for cleaning up the round, and good on Matt for finding that um, that updraft kill to start things off. I mean, he he played those knives perfectly. He only had about a second and a half to do it uh, with that float time over that that heaven wall. Uh, but he got he got his, and that's all you really need to do in that situation. Yeah. Now Matt trying to push aggressively towards B. If he can catch out Savo right here on the swing, which he does, it takes out so much utility. It takes out all that post plant ability for the rest of Keanu, as now it's a fight in towards CT. Tiny and Bondo each able to find one. Chris M as well. It's now a 4v2. It's going to be a rewrap. The, side, the sides have completely swapped. All of Keanu is on the defender side right now, and Chris M just trying to buy some time, just trying to give the rest of Keanu a little bit of an avenue into this site. So oh. here's Volt. That was an inspirational Great. attack from the Huskies. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've ever seen a five-man mid-push go off that quickly and that effectively in my entire time playing this game watching this game observing this game i they're they're mixing and matching strats right now and i'm loving what they're cooking up it's the last round the last retake kiano cooked up a crazy mid push matt in a 1v4 turned 1v3 after the first now peers into the site has to clear everything out it finds chris m but chris m on the reswing Guarantees Keanu a 9-3 half. Right, well, I mean, it's uh, it's curse time, baby. It's uh, <laughs> it's time to milk it for everything that's you've got. You know, you have your solo queue teammates and your silver lobbies talking about 9-3 curse. Well, this is the kind of stage where it actually matters. This is the situation where switching onto that defensive side on ascent, you know, having had some time to read your opponents and get a better sense for how they like to play. You know, you, you've come up pretty big in the last four rounds going three out of the four in a row um you, you know things are coming up Keanu, and it's about whether they can really claim this pistol that i think is going to determine the outcome in this game is how well this pistol goes for this team okay i want to i just want to say something i feel personally attacked here uh, i played my silver two rank up game yesterday and <laughs> I, I i played i played i played you know, my silver one rank up game over the weekend buddy don't worry you're we're, we're all together yeah. in this one yeah, so I, what do you mean it doesn't matter? My silver two rank up does matter, okay? But you know, I guess it does make sense that this NECC collegiate game does matter more than my silly little silver rank up. It's actually a hit by GCU in towards tree. Smokes have come out. Tiny and Savo here to defend it. Heaven doesn't work out Tiny's way. Matt's able to find the headshot. Savo in towards hell gets spammed up by Dino while he's blind? Are you kidding me? As Chris M dives into the side, he's able to find two. It makes numbers a little bit more even, but Matt, ever so dependable for GCU, finds a second, keeps numbers in their favor, and GCU take another pistol. I've got like six questions based okay. off of how that round ran out. So question yeah, number one off. is why doesn't uh -huh. Matt die? ever um he's cooking question number two how yeah. come when my boy dino runs in a straight line w keying with his classic he gets two headshots off before a ghost can find his dome question number um, three is basically a repeat of the last two questions four more times over until we get to six like i am so confused by how those gunfights played out the way they did it's it, it doesn't make sense it, it, it's they, they're defying all the laws right now yeah, and, well, hold on, hold on. You, they are defying, but Volt. Oh, whoa, whoa, Chris, uh, M. Chris M. really wanted that judge. I oh, mean, I can't. Hate okay. So, uh, okay. Lots. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> so take what I just said last round into context, and then let's get a quick little look at Sipe screen to see what he's cooking. Yeah. What what right. what triggered that full <laughs> flick headshot through the smoke? On a walk, on a shift walking target. I'd like to uh, uh, screen is check it, webcam, is money it, cams, is, money cams. It's cl do we have Clara in chat? That's my question. <laughs> like, is Clara in the room with us right now? <laughs> John, yeah, literally. <laughs> but now we see this flash and dash. It's kind of a last chance attempt. Bondo oh. does get immediately shot out through top mid. He's able to find that first onto Dino. 
That's kind of huge. Tiny. The only B defender here. It's 4v4 days. Dino's been taken out of this round. And, and honestly, that's that's kind of big. As now Savo deep in this push. They don't know where he is. But as the KJ utility comes down on, on the side of Savo, like it, it's going to kind of draw some rotations. It's going to make the noise. But Keanu, they're, they're moving off the wrong side. GCU, they want to hit B. Oh, no. Tiny is going to try to readjust, find that shot, but Sype has proven that he can just win fights that he's not supposed to win. Senja will take two for himself, though. Two nice headshots. We'll see if the Huskies can successfully reclaim control of the site here as soon as that bomb goes down. I don't think they've heard bomb tap yet. Now that they have, it's going to pull Salvo finally off of that A site, the ever so dependable anchor. It's 3v2 on this retake. The market door is down. It's going to be an all three retake from market. If Matt <laughs> swings, he's only able to take one. It's 2v1. Sype in towards that stairs area. The paranoia comes out. No one with it. The teleport comes through, though, but Senja too clean. Able to find three and give Keanu their four. <laughs> Yeah, really nicely done from Senja. I mean, he came up huge in that round. I was just watching him there when they were pushing from market and they're thinking about how they were going to hit that back. There's a clip. I'll see if I can find it on my computer. I know, Angel, you definitely want to see this. We can throw it on Twitter maybe later for the people to watch. Uh, but there's a clip from our tryouts where Savo was playing uh, KO on Pearl. And he's rounding a corner on a retake onto B site. And he goes to throw his knife just as the defender swings. And he chucks his knife straight into their forehead. And it was, I, I honestly, I think it's the funniest thing I've ever seen about KO. I thought we were about to re-see it there. Uh, just the only reason I'm rambling on giving you context about it. But I was, I was really looking forward to the sender run back, uh, throwing that knife straight into Matt's forehead. Yeah, it would have been, would have been really funny. But instead, Matt just takes a dive with a bullet in the brain. Tiny. Now with this Ares, oh, has it all Oh my oh, Matt god. Just doesn't care. Running it down with a judge. The B site is GCU's. And at this point, Chris M trying to break that market door gives Dino a pathing into market. If the smoke fades at the wrong time as Dino clears, Chris M does eventually go down. Oh. Op out for Bondo. Numbers not in favor. Savo's able to find the first if they want to go for this, but Bondo's already committed to the save. And yeah, playing for OT <clears throat> is Keanu. This is a tough spot call to make because you know if you lose this round, you're screwed. But you know if you lose this round with no guns, you're double screwed. But if you save your guns, maybe you can win eight in a row. Like that's a <laughs> that's that's a that's a real bind you've put yourself in. Is the best outcome you have is choosing not to die and winning eight consecutive rounds for the victory. That's that's the absolute best case scenario you've created for yourself. Okay. Yeah, definitely is the best scenario you've created. However, little plus side, you took out four of their guns, right? I mean, when we talk about economy, that's it's kind of the big thing, isn't it? You know, getting rid of as many weapons, even if they do win the round, we see Volt only on a Spectre here. Yeah, the unfortunate component to that assessment is that your opponents can still full buy with full armor this round so that has to pay off huge here or it won't make any difference for the rest of the map you don't have that extra round of padding now you've got to be clean and perfect for the rest of this match and tiny getting beat out with the odin immediately countered by the judge last round was definitely not an ideal situation for him okay but the guardian proves better than the aries he's able to find matt can't cook anything up for this round it's been a cancelled from the shadows, as Savo's still here towards B, they've doubled up on the site. Numbers in favor, so huge opening by Tiny. It's, it's given Keanu a very rare, hard-to-come-by numbers advantage for them so far. Chris M, just, just lurking around, having a good old time of things in towards Tree. And, I mean, you look at, like, Senja all the way deep in towards that defender spawn. It's going to kind of give a huge avenue, but... Now that this smoke has come in, flash as well, Savo has to back up. Tiny gets taken down by Volt with that Spectre. They know Savo's still here. He has to try and find something. Senja's able to trade out that body, so numbers remain equal, but no spike gone down yet. Senja, though, will be the first of the three to fall. Bondo on this op has to go big here. Sype able to find one. Now it's Chris M needing to find two. Nader 
has been spotted. Chris M, unfortunately not yet. As this clear comes through, Nader has to try and re-clear, but Chris M, too cold, too calm, too calculated, able to barely hold on, give Keanu that fifth. And recover the op for Sabo. So you're able to carry on that big heavy gun going into this next round of the map. You know, you're still able to force buy up to, you know, probably some, yeah, either a Vandal or maybe a Bulldog. You know, you can still get something decent, some decent bang for your buck here. Uh, but that Operator carrying over is really, really crucial because it's going to change how GCU has to play these attacks, how they have to flood through mains. And hopefully those weaker weapons will be able to survive uh, in those closer corner combat uh, scenarios. It's a very, very gracious gift that Chris M has been able to give them as Matt with this judge does get taken out by Chris M on the site. He's able to finally provide that dark cover in towards the site. The paranoia out as well, just to try and delay a bit more. Flashpoint means nothing. And Recon Bolt C is nothing as it's now kind of a return to slow pace in the rounds. Bolt actually took the bomb back to attacker spawn and is full wrapping around B through spawn. I think he's just waiting to hear if the Huskies are rotating. I'm not really quite sure what the call is here, but he's only got a classic, and he's just full-on sprinted across the other side of the map. And Sype entering in towards this A site. He's able to find Chris M. That's huge. That's rifles now in the hands of GCU players. Bondo's able to find one, but it's only oh. equally able to What is that flick, Bondo? Oh, oh my, my goodness. Nader, a judge? Now a Vandal, making upgrades the whole way through. Savo on a judge of his own, breaks that door tree. Tiny, having to find a way in with the rifle. He's able to find the first. It leaves Volt 1v3. Maybe he gets taken out. The tap's too clean by Tiny to give Keanu a sixth. Oh yeah. my goodness. That's uh, That was a... Uh systematic and thorough clearing from tiny i mean that's you can't get any better than that you know you watch you know your coach tells you to hit the custom lobbies and and dry run your clears and, and get your timings down perfect i mean tiny tiny is, is is revolutionizing the clear the clear patterns here i love the way he's just going through and checking everything he's making sure he's he's, he's checked all of his corners he's not leaving any off angle um to give them an advantage in gcu they tried to make the best out of their eco but tiny shut that down Way too hard, way too strong. I just phenomenal, phenomenal playing out of Tiny. And we actually see now as the recovery starts to take place, Bondo up to 15 and Tiny up to 12. It's a dry hit. It's a dry and fast hit by GCU onto this A site. Bondo and Sabo each able to find one with the Blade Storm out, though. Bondo not able to find three. Instead, it's Chris M having to clean it up. It's now Volt alone. 1v2 and a half. Assuming Senja can't get revived here, Chris M picks up the op for his own. If Volt peeks it, he goes down and Senja gets revived. Three alive still. Seven rounds for Keanu. I mean, <laughs> don't call it a comeback, right? Oh, it, not it, yet. It, it started off and it was looking real, real rocky. And it's still looking a little bit shaky, but... These last few rounds have looked really, really solid for the Huskies, and GCU is forced on yet another save round. Like, we know this is a defender-sided map, but is it an 8-4 defender-sided map? Is it a is it a win eight consecutive while your opponent's on match point or map point kind of rap map? I I I don't know. It's 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 looking like it right now. I don't want to jinx anything yet. I'm not gonna call it a comeback until we see double digits on both sides. It's it just it, we've seen it so many times when you're down nine three going into that first half. You get a couple rounds, you start to think that something could be making something. There could be something in the makings here, and then it just doesn't come through. So we need to see composure from every single round at this point from Keanu Volt peering in from Cat in towards Tree. It takes care of so much utility. Gets forced out. Savo knows someone's there. The turret knows someone's <coughs> there. The swarm grenade to delay if someone is there, but Bondo able to find Nader towards main. It gives numbers. It's that op opening up the round again. A slower round, albeit. And now Bondo. Now alone. Really, really alone on this site. The flash coming in towards tree. 
just to try and blind for a cross. It doesn't come through. Savo holding. Bondo knows he's safe. Let's smoke him down. Oh, this. Bondo almost found the flick. Almost, but not enough. It's a 5v4 on this retake, though. So, I mean, again, numbers are in your favor. There's no rifles for GCU to really work with here. If Chris M just goes out of the smoke a bit too willy-nilly, he does end up getting traded. But he's able to, again, take down one in the process. The flash comes through. Matt's gone. That's that Marshall out of the round. It's just Dino. 1v3. He's alone in hell. The knife clears him out, though. Bondo cleans him up. And it's an eighth round now for, not GCU, for Keanu. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think what is so hysterical to me about that play and hopefully you can appreciate this too, Angel, is that as soon as Riot announced the new smoke changes, all the high-level players are going to Twitter and they're like, this takes all the skill out of the game. This makes it too easy. This game is so dumb. I can't play this game anymore. This is terrible. They're making smoke so easy. They're ruining my favorite role, blah, 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 blah. And then we just watched Senja throw a flash through the smoke as it was dissipating with all the new glittery sparkle, sparkling particle effects. And it, it, clearly, it's not making that much of a difference because we have this giant alarm telling you that that smoke's going away. And we're still going to do this every now and again. It happens to the best of us uh, so i i i i, I re personally as a smokes player i appreciated seeing that uh it, uh, i agree it, i agree with what you're saying but hear me out okay this is million iq maybe call it copium whatever but if you notice in that clip they didn't keanu did not get flashed there so maybe it was just million iq <laughs> micro timing from senja to be able to be like oh my god wait it's not gonna blind us but the smoke's gonna go down as soon as i throw the flash when they're gonna be flashed and we're not gonna be flashed and then we we win. Maybe that's what it was. You know, I'm just million IQ. So what you're telling me is okay. that Senja is literally the greatest of all time. Is that is that yeah. is that that roughly what 100%. you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Better best best KO on the planet. You know what? You know what? I can see that. That's honestly that's more yeah. likely than what I said. So. I think that Senja's IQ at least four thousand. You know, I, I I don't know if it's higher than that. I I can't count that high. You know, I have like three IQ. <clears throat> Well, in any case, here we are, going into round, round 21. number 31, uh, 20, uh, 31, hold on, 31? hold on, round 31, that was our, that, that was the Maryville game, Maryville game was round 31, here we are on round 21, Husky's down by four, and so far this defensive setup has really, I think, stopped GCU in that tracks, I mean, forcing that timeout has got to feel good for the Huskies after going down the way you did on attack, being able to force the timeout the way you are here, it, it's so good for the morale, and and hopefully, you know, these reads coming through from Chris as he seems to know that this B, B hit is on its way and he finds the opening pick onto Dino as well. Oh, but this timing, if Matt peeks through the smoke and Chris isn't watching it, he's able to find Volt. Oh, but the trade comes through. Matt's not able to find more than one, though. The dash just going a little bit dry. So he's only able to find Tiny. Keeps numbers heavily in favor, I feel like, of... Of piano. Oh, Bondo repeaking. A little too a little too ambitious here. Chris M on for four. Waits for Savo. Keep things 1v2. Keep things clean. Don't make it a clutch if you don't have to. Noise comes out. Chris M on the backstab. Finds the fourth. Finds a ninth for Keanu. And now we go to round 22. Uh, unfortunately, Savo chose not to pick up the operator, and now Bondo's going to have to bite the big check bullet and pick up another operator. I mean, at this point, honestly, uh, you know, it's not like if you lose the round, you're going to go down on eco because you're just going to lose the map. So uh, not a significant difference, but as these rounds scale up, you know, we might see that coming back to bite him later. He will be able to re-grab that, though, so that utility still stays online, and the Husky is now going to shift over to this A side here and see maybe if they can put that pressure here uh, make a read on how GCU wants to play this next round. Yeah, it's it's going to have to be a pretty big, pretty insane read. Chris M. <laughs> oh, getting caught out by Volt. It's been that B lurker every time here, Tiny. Just going in with this attempt to trade. Matt takes out that market door. It's a 2v2. And that big kind of heavy hitter of these last few rounds has gone down Volt. Pushed in towards lane with that stinger, trying to find anything more than the first. Bondo able to find Matt. That's huge pickups and is able to find another tag onto Nader. 
Senja able to take out Volt. Tiny just sprinkling shots through the site. Senja as well. Senja's able to find one. Sabo and Bondo clean up. And now I'm willing to start calling it a comeback for Keanu. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I think we had some good luck going our way. I'm not going to call it a comeback until it's 12 to 12. I'm not calling it a comeback until it's OT. Because I don't want to risk anything. I don't want them to blame me after the game ends and say, look what you did. It's all your fault. Uh, okay. With that said, with that said, these adaptations from the Huskies on defense have looked really, really good. And, I mean, yes, defender sided, but you still have to play it correctly. You have to put the right agents in the right spots. I mean, Tiny, we know he's a B-side warrior, but he's actually going to go for this uh, Vandal here. No uh, Odin for him on this round. Yeah, and look at this straight B-hit coming out. Chris M, not able to find anything more than the null command. Gets spammed out by Tiny, though. That's huge. Numbers in favor of GCU off this straight away hit tiny on this owl drone not able to find anything for bondo to hit bondo trying to work around something trying to get something to chew on it's a lockdown coming out for gcu doubled out by the side of Keanu. that's huge it's going to mean that a lot of players from gcu need to evacuate we see matt doing exactly that it's been both Lockdown sent away. Matt from Maine able to find one. The Blade Storm not pulling through. Bondo and Tiny each able to combine. The Blade Storm been popped. Tiny at 20 HP. 1v2 clutch. Time running low. I think I jinxed it, Zeddy. <coughs> Jason, you take the first map. Dang it, Angel. Yeah. It's all your fault. I know. <laughs> you did this. I did. This is <laughs> this is this is this is what you've done, and and, and yeah. I mean, with that said, it's the stats sheet that I'm looking at says it's probably more accurate that this is what Matt has done, uh, considering that he dropped 27 kills with 11 first bloods to his name, uh, is probably a little bit more accurate. But uh, wow, I, I I mean, you have to say. Looking at that game, we did not anticipate a 13-10 finish. At least, I, I will say I did not anticipate a 13-10 finish. I, I thought we were going to get maybe a 13-7 if we were lucky. Um, so, we got there. We almost got there. But it doesn't result in a map win. And that means the Huskies are now going to go into the next map of this series on the back foot. A situation that they're not very familiar with if you've been following them at all this season. Yeah, it's, again, back foot. They're down a map, going into map two. But before we go into map two, we are going to go to a quick break. We will see you right back for NECC versus Grand Canyon University map two.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Zeddy, and I'm joined again by the wonderful, the magnificent, the caster-cursing Ancient Angel, who lost us our first map on Ascent. Sorry, buddy. It's, uh, I don't make the rules. Uh, I just commentate you can't them. You gas me up. I... You can't gas me up like that. I, like, did, like, a hair flip and everything, and then you just said caster-cursing immediately after. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> going into map number going. two. It's a fresh start for the Huskies. We're on a better map that's less cringe, and we're playing Lotus, which is more fun. But to be very, 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 very aware of is that, yes, we are on a roll swap, and yes, that means that Senja is picking up the slack on Viper this time. That means Chris is going to rotate over to the Omen. So this is actually, literally every person has changed agents except for Tiny, now on the Lotus setup. Every and single even person. then, this is still a kind of new comp, so normally Tiny actually would prefer to play the fade here but it's been a relatively new change for them to have tiny just move onto the sky so now moving into this it's like it's it's like literally everyone's almost on like a, a new agent or a relatively new agent here's here's Kinda my thing similar roles. when this map first got announced and everybody saw astra and harbor in the trailer the cinematic everybody's like "Ooh, astra harbor on this map and at first it was a meme but it was also like kind of not terrible because Harbor actually can do some pretty decent things on this map. And then people started playing Viper and competitive, and I was like, oh, that's so weird. Viper's so good on every other map. Like, make there a map where she's not the best. And then I played her on this map, and I was like, she's the best. Like, it's just, you can't avoid how freaking good this agent is. And I, I really, is really like how it changes, um, you know, the way you play and approach this map. Uh, the lurk pressure from Viper is so phenomenal, and it doesn't look like Dino is going to be setting it up for GCU on their attacking side. But just do you wait until you see how the Huskies like to play this Viper on this map, what? because it is so threatening. How how is Matt just levitating in midair like that? Uh, it's it's uh, it's what he do. He 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 got that he got that tech that hidden tech. Mm -hmm. Okay, and instead KJ's tech, specifically Savo's tech, does get taken out early. Chris M. The Sheriff shots forces him to fall back. They have complete control of A-Link. GCU planting B early. Tiny on the flicks, though. Able to open up this round. Give numbers in favor of Keanu on this retake. And now, man, Tiny. 14 HP only. Bondo looking to try and break in through heaven. Two towards C-Link. Two towards A-Link. Bondo finds that first onto Dino. Sype alone in that corner does get cleared out by Bondo. It's the last two players from GCU going down to give Keanu their first pistol round in the whole series. Yeah, I mean, n on top of that, it, it looks like whatever it was that was preventing the Huskies from shooting straight on Ascent has been eliminated from their systems. Like, maybe they just took that three minutes and they just mucked down as much Subway uh, and as much Red Bull as possible because they're awake and thriving right now. They they, they really, really look like they're, they're in a much better position this game. Uh, last game, you know, you can't give credit. You can't say gun gunplay is the only thing that caused that last game to end the way it did. It, it definitely wasn't. I mean, we saw the Huskies on that defending side looking much, much stronger. Uh, but it did look like a couple shots were just going haywire. And now we're really seeing the Huskies putting those bullets where they belong and finding their kills uh, when they out macro and really, really nicely done from the Huskies there. What what sandwich from Subway makes you aim better in Valorant? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I think I might throw that up as a Twitter poll to be or a Twitch poll. Uh, to be honest, mm. as soon as we get a, some moment of peace and quiet here, uh, you know, and you can start th start throwing your responses in the chat now before that poll comes live. But uh, yeah, we'd love to hear Twitch chat's thought. Which Subway sub makes you the most powerful in Valorant? Yeah, I need to know this. Can someone please let me know in Twitch chat? Or if right. it's not, you know what? I'm you know Subway? what? I'm not gonna wait. I'm th I'm putting up the poll okay. right now. Manage Perfect. poll. I, I'll, I'll take over question. the voicing. Which so? It's actually a scuffle towards A, where GCU is looking to enter. And oh my goodness. It's like, oh, it's just off the contact of this Viper while dropping. The Util's coming out. Bondo able to find two up towards Rubble. He can't get out, but Tiny is there to keep the numbers in favor. Tiny goes down, though. It's a 3v2. And now Spectres have been collected. Chris M. Peppering out Sype. As Sype opens the door, looks to clear out tree. Chris M has to back up. Rotating away from B towards A. With Savo in tow. Senja on the backstab. Do they know? No, they don't. Sype is planting 
the two and tree are there. Chris M and Savo in through stairs. I've been like rhyming this whole time. I just, I just want to mention yeah, that. You've been, been kind of you've been you've been spitting a little bit. You've been you've been spitting yeah. up something nasty. I, I just put so I was I was a little I was really focused on coming up with the cr the most creative combination of subway orders for the poll. Um, that should be live on Twitch now. If you check your Twitch chat, uh, you should see that there. So please do give us your thoughts. It's very very important to being an angel that we get your honest feedback on that. Uh, and the Huskies will successfully retake the site, more importantly yeah. <laughs> than I our mean, silly I mean, you do goals. lose three, so as we talk about an anti-eco, this is going to not necessarily be an aggressive bonus round for Keanu, but it should still be a bonus round to some degree. Um, that's going to be important. I mean, do you want my honest opinion about what subway what subway order? Yeah, let's, let's, let's start it off. Let's let the chat I know think, what, what you think. For me, I think it's like a... Um, I, I do like a I think like in the states we call it like a like a chicken tender sub or like a chicken Caesar sub. I don't know if that's you guys have that in Canada as well. Uh, we've got, we've got the fried chicken patties. It's uh they they got it. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have the whole subway thing where it, like you can just pick a number and it like auto makes your sub for you because like you know you're, yeah. you're lazy and you don't want to go to subway for the right reasons. Uh, kick and yeah, chicken. That's what we got. Kick and chicken. Okay. Nice. Yeah, we've, we've got, I, I like that. I think those are pretty good. Tiny, though, on this bonus. Able to find a huge pick. That's a first opener on Nader. The util war towards C does come through. Tiny gets taken out by Scythe. And now it's this it's this C rolling hit that's coming Ooh. in. Matt taken down. Sky flicked by Bondo. Just again, to keep numbers in check here. It's an even even retake here. 3v3. Numbers in, not numbers, weapons, sorry, in favor of GCU. But it's these two players, Savo and Senja, both with Spectres in hand. And these are very close engagements that are about to come through. Chris M has to back off. Savo takes down Volt, takes down one of those guns. Sype is low and gets sprayed down. Chris Ooh. M behind Dino makes a bonus round look easy. Keanu up to three. I don't know if you got to see what Chris just did there, but as uh, Senja went to go pick up the Vandal and Dino was locked onto him, just making sure he could hold and take out that important gun, Chris TPs behind the bomb through water, wraps around with the Sheriff and, and goes for the wraparound kill onto Dino. Like his awareness of that timing and that capability was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I think, you know, something to note about Lotus is, yeah, you're on a buy round. Yeah, you got some big guns. You can probably bust through this site with ease. But the retake, the like the defending against that retake, those specters are pretty freaking lethal in all those tor those tight angles that you've got on site. Uh, and I think Senja pr proved that, uh, or Savo proved that rather, by finding some pretty good kills for himself in that round. So you got to think about the plant not just from minute one, but also from final execution as well. And the Huskies definitely did their homework. Did their homework indeed. It's Chris M. Now alone on this B site. As the execute comes through, Matt, a demon on this judge. There's three that turn their backs to Dino. Dino almost able to get a free pick, just barely misses. The flashes don't come through. It's a spray down from Savo and Senja from that C-Link area. Three players go down, leaving it in a 2v4. The Seekers are out as well. Dino and Sype alone in this post plant. Now it's just Sype alone, 1v4. Blast pack out, stunned up as well. What? What is what is what is gonna happen? Bondo clean headshots comes through. Bomb gets stuck. Cano up to four. It's been looking nice. Good yeah. recovery. Yep, yeah, they woke up. They took a three minute power nap and they came back and they woke up. I I mean their their defense looks so good. And one thing I really want to give credit to is I think the Huskies do better than you know really any other team I've seen on this map. Uh, now okay. Let me let me preface that statement by saying I probably don't watch as much Valorant as our viewers and definitely not as much as you. But to me, it's impressive. The awareness, the presence of mind, as my friend Ancient Angel would say, is that the second they start that B hit, immediately Chris runs to secret and starts spraying open that door because he knows he's going to get absolutely blown up by the paint shells if he doesn't create that space for himself. So just knowing, like, okay, that's my go button. I need to create that space for myself and creating that opening for Tiny to rotate. I mean, it's paid off already three times in this map so i just wanted to draw some attention to it yeah it's really strong and now as we go into this fifth round Keanu looking to keep that flawless streak alive i mean it's just it's been really slow gameplay chris m though on the other side of the map in towards b able to find nader that's any sort of flank protection gone bondo lurking around rubble 
Just trying to keep himself alive. He peeks into both Dino and the sky of Volt. Not able to find anything there. And that's that's now equal numbers. And you traded out KJ for for Rays. So yeah, yeah, I I think I think Bondo had a really good play getting that rebel control. And hang on a second, as Matt will clear out Savo from CT. But What's is that? it a nice rebel play that he just couldn't convert on? I don't think he was aware of that double swing. Whoa, what? Sipe? Hello? I, I'm telling you, Again? man. I'm telling you, man. I at first it was a joke. Now I'm getting a little concerned. What is? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, literally, what? right? What? Huh? What's happening? Like, how does how do, he does it twice now? It's just spray through the smoke. Like, I, I guess it's because it's an on angle. Savo was caught earlier asleep at the wheel. Tiny <clears throat> not able to find anything in this one v four. Matt cooking up a three k to give GCU their first. Um. Apparently, I've let Twitch chat down with the uh, subway suggestions that I ran. Uh, I'm seeing in chat that it's a chicken Caesar. It's a chicken Caesar or a turkey bacon sub. Those are the only viable options. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the results from this uh, and see what got voted for. it. And uh, so far, it's a three-way tie between cold cut steak and cheese and meatball. Um, so it looks like it looks like we've kind of split the Valorant community on this. I think this is probably the most controversial, divisive poll. Uh, ever to plague the Valorant community. Oh. Okay, so for anyone that handles any sort of Twitter for Keanu Esports or any sort of content in general, uh, I so I Hi. need I need you know like okay perfect. So so I need what I need after this game is I need you to to get all the Valorant guys together and give them like ask ask them to give you their go to subway order and you know like the VCT like copy crosshairs. Do that, but with subway orders. Uh, I don't know the VCT copy crosshairs. You're going to have to show me that after. It's, but yes. It's an image that they do in VCT. Or it's like, oh, copy this player's crosshair. Or copy this player's subway order. You know? I like it. No, it's good. That's good content. Oh, the blast packing Roomba. The Roomba that flies. The boombot. The little boombot who could the eventually. <laughs> I like that. That's good. It doesn't matter. As the showstopper comes out from Bondo, Chris M gets two on the retake. Dino goes down to the showstopper. And it's all cleaned up. It's a confident retake. Four alive for Keanu to get their fifth round. The oh, little man. boom bot that could. Oh, man. I think I'm going to change the stream title. That's fantastic. I love that. Uh, I mean, I mean, they tried. They were, they were. They think they were spending too much time uh, uh, labbing, labbing unique uh, utility interactions than to focus on their post plan setup. Because unfortunately, the Huskies just tore, tore right through that. Uh, you know, they made light work of that. Um, the first adaptation I'm seeing here, I think maybe they started this on round four or five here. Uh, but Sendra is actually throwing that wall A side now. Um, you know, they've decided that Seaside support, rather than locking down that Sentinel, they're actually going to switch entirely the KJ and the Viper here over to this A side, reading this heavy aggression out A main. I mean, it makes sense. You want to just constantly switch up where you're being aggressive and where you're not being aggressive. <coughs> Salvo on that spray down through the toxic screen, able to get a couple tags. This A hit coming in, Matt showing no fear, W keying in. The showstopper hasn't been fired off yet i thought he actually fired it and didn't find anything there it is but senjin's able to take him down so it goes one for one it's not what you want to see if you're committing that showstopper instead here we see the lockdown being committed it's a flood retake that kiano wants to start getting online and bondo's able to find volt on this flank and now dino in his own viper's pit able to find chris m Oh my goodness, Tiny gets taken down as the door gets opened. Good presence of mind from Nader, but does get traded out. It's 2v1, and now it's Dino in his own Viper's Pit. Has to back away, has to play to live, has to try and do something here as Bondo and Savo are able to take him down. It's a sixth round for Keanu, and they don't show any signs of stopping. I love the way the Huskies played that retake. I mean, you immediately snap the KJ ultimate. I think being able to find, uh, Savo being able to find that pick uh, onto 
I'm going to quickly check his name before I forget. Yes, Matt. <laughs> before finding that pick onto Matt as early as he did in that round was really, really good. Uh, being able to trade out that rocket, it really shut things down. Uh, but I'm a little confused by GCU's thought process in terms of planting. Because you know you're planting the Viper. Like, you're trading the Viper ult for the KJ ult, right? Which means that yeah. you know there's only one of two things that's going to occur. You're either going to get forced out into A main, or you're going to get forced out into tree. And they didn't really play for the A main, but they planted for the A main flood. Right? So they planted totally opposite and then flooded into tree anyways. And I feel like they kind of trapped themselves between a rock and a hard place where uh, you're basically forced to overswing to defend the bomb that you set up for yourself and you're under your own conditions and on your own terms. And I think it, we're starting to see GCU looking a little bit more disjointed. I, I think their ascent was very, very strong and they clearly had some very set plays and some very set lineups and some very set, this is what we want to do. But we're starting to see some cracks in that setup as we look towards their Lotus where some of those... You know, one of these things is not like the other, if you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, one of these things, not like <clears throat> the other, one of these things just don't belong. And something else that I want to draw attention to is I think if you look at uh, Matt and his performance so far in this map, it's not nearly as strong as we saw in in <clears throat> Ascent. I think he, he is actually, I mean, he's still strong. He's still an insane player and he's still just absolutely farming these kids. But I mean, he's, yeah, like, I mean, we look at him four and six. Is that really the, the same Matt that we saw in Ascent that was like running through smokes with judges just gunning people and, down? And that's kind of what I'm saying is I feel like that Ascent map rewards a certain play style that I think GCU really, really like. Um, you, you know, it was actually the Huskies map pick, ironically enough, is that this this is actually uh, the GCU map pick, So, which I find very interesting when you look at these two teams. But it just, it, it, they they really thrived in those aim duels, you know, that puggy style that Ascent provides. And Lotus, where it's a little bit more default heavy, they're just not finding as much success on their offense. Not at all, as we see Chris M, just towards B. That Viper's Pit is out towards C. And this is something that I've always wanted Senja to do, or, or just the Viper on Keanu to do back when it was Chris M, was just use that Viper's Pit. Just get it out. It's such a strong piece of utility, Matt. Trying to jiggle out of this... Dark cover to find a pick onto Chris M. Chris M backs off into the opposing forces dark cover. As now he's able to find that first on Tenator. The guiding light does come through, but Chris M doesn't care. He turns it to find a second and then a third. Oh, can he get the ace? Can we go? Oh! No, he can't. Sabo down to 5 HP. Matt cooking up a 1v5 potentially. It doesn't come through. Bondo. Just completely shuts it down, gives guarantees a 7-5 half for Keanu, and on a map like Lotus that we tend to view as attacker sided. Yeah. Um <laughs> it's a it's a weird day for Valorant, I feel like. You you're you everyone's just like choking on their map pick. I, I don't really know why that's happening, to be honest. Like I it's it's strange how much more confident GCU looked when they were on the ascent and they were on the Lotus. Um, I, it's 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 definitely interesting, but I think the Huskies are doing a really good job of stabilizing. Like if you kind of look at you know going from their defensive side on ascent into Lotus, how many? What is that round differential? They've they've won. Whoa, whoa. We'll talk about whoa. it. Later. We got some more important stuff going on right now. Bondo and Tiny just W keying out, doing their best Jing and Forsaken impressions from Paper X. Matt doing something similar. Sabo goes down, but Senj is able to trade out one for one. 2v3. Retake ready, but Matt. Oh, he's looking for a flank. He's able to find that first on the Bondo, but Tiny quick on that trade. Sipe alone, 1v2. Plant comes down towards A. Chris M and Tiny in tow. Trailblazer comes out. The, front, the shadow step does come through. It does get destroyed. The flash comes out. Chris M. Shadow step. Sight goes down. Eighth round for Keanu. Yeah, really, really nice retake from the Huskies. They started things off so well, uh, finding that double kill and basically corralling GCU into C main. Uh, you know, they, they played a really good double swing on that opening there with Matt taking a ton of space up water. I think they did a really good job. And I was actually kind of nervous for the Huskies there when, you know, it went from a five to three to a two to three. Um, yeah, sorry, a five to three to a three to two uh, player advantage because a three to two is definitely playable 
uh, or two to three, I should say, from GCU is definitely playable. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself even with all these numbers I'm talking about. The numbers advantage looked a lot better for GCU going into that second half of that rep is the moral of the story. Uh, but I yeah, think really where it really fell apart right. a little bit was just, you know, the Huskies knowing that that waterfall push was going to be uh, the biggest kind of weakness in their defensive setup and being able to recognize that weakness and capitalize off of it, turn it into a strength, really, really paid off for them. Sure did. And now we actually get to see Sencha kind of just playing around a little bit. Just, again, just being wherever he needs to be. Tiny and Bondo again towards a lobby. If he doesn't get his head taken off, he does. Nader able to find one. As now Dino trying to fight off Tiny on this flank. He knows Matt's here too. If Matt oh. keeps any, it doesn't matter. Tiny again with this trailblazer out. Ready to guiding light his way around. Oh, the flash coming through. They peek him. He's aiming at the floor. He still finds a third. It's 2v2 now. Guns equalized. Economics don't matter moving into the later half of this round. Senja throwing up that wall. Trying to buy a little bit of time. Playing in that dark cover towards B. I feel like it's going to be a retake. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna have to be a retake thankfully no ultimates available for gcu so it's gonna make it a little bit more playable for the huskies but you do talk about how controllers alive increases your post plant success and you know how much more does that matter when you've got two you've got so many smokes on the side of gcu available for this post plant you have the smoke orb i think you have two omen uh orbs as well actually just one uh as he did already place one here onto site to protect that plant uh, so this is going to be a difficult retake scenario for the Huskies is they're going to have to figure out how to deal with all of this controller utility from Grand Canyon. It's a difficult 2v2 at that for the veteran duo of Senja and Savo. They have so much work to do moving in to <clears throat> this late round into this retake, trying to find a ninth. Smokes are going down on that spike. Savo... Looking from water, Senja goes down. Salvo able to find the first. It's 1v1. Salvo v Sipe. As now the turn comes in, the flanks have been played. The roundabout game has gone in favor of Sipe. Salvo gets the kill but doesn't have the time. Two rounds for GCU and a dire round at that. Yeah, GCU needed to get one on the board and they're able to squeeze it out just by the hairs. I mean, that was just really, really tough. They decided to regroup through CT, which I think was intelligent, you know, knowing the smoke timings and likely where Grand Canyon was going to be placing those smokes. But uh, unfortunately, it wasted too much time and they just needed to speed up their re their retake uh, on that call. I think it was just a, an unfortunate assessment of the amount of time that they had available to do it because they got the job, job, job done. Angel, help me. Please. They got the job done. Thank you. They got the but... job done, but at what cost? Yeah. And, and I mean, now it's it's really going to show. If you look at those guns. I, I mean, need a nap, even, man. <laughs> you're telling me, man. <laughs> so we're going in to now round 11 of this half. GCU trying to grab four. And I, I think that's that's good looks, right? If you're able to grab four here, it's like, okay, sure, you went down like 6-7-0, oh, but you were able to get some sort of a recovery. It's the Seekers coming out on the side of Bolt. Showstopper out for Matt. Savo. Having to back up, having oh. to give out a little bit, but Senja gets rid of Matt before the rocket even gets sent. Showstopper, not a factor anymore. Chris M towards drop, it doesn't matter. Senja just holding on bit by bit as Chris M pushes out of the snake's bite. Savo and Chris M each able to still find one. A second for Savo and a ninth round for Keanu. Keeping GCU at only two. A max three if they're able to find the last round, but... I don't think economics are really going to call for so, it. So here's a little bit of Valorant trivia for you. Um, okay. In the game of Valorant, professionally, yeah. the way that they uh -huh. make their decisions and the way that they assess their strategies is not based off of, you know, objectivity like it is in a game like League of Legends or Hearthstone. It's it's probabilities, right? Um, well, actually, I should say Hearthstone is more probabilities. But it's all based off probabilities, right? The way you evaluate, uh, you know, the percentage success of a retake or the percentage success of a, uh, a 2v4 or whatever. It's all based yeah. off probabilities. Let me ask you, Angel, what would you okay. say the probability of winning a 1v1 gunfight is when you're up against a raise rocket and you're fully smoked, tucked into a corner on a defensive site? Um, okay. I mean, it 
I think it depends a little bit on the, the surrounding context of the situation. But isolated 1v1 in a pocket, I'd give it like a 50%. You yeah. give it a 50% just... when you're fully blind, we're getting charged at with a raised rocket that you don't yeah, know where it's coming blind? from. Yeah, was the, he fully o- blind? Yeah, the that? omen blind. The omen blind came out. Oh, never mind. No, he he should have been dead. <laughs> that should have not been him at all. I thought he was like oh, I thought he was like awake and like he he was able to hit the flick and like you know I think the reason I say fifty fifty is because it's kind of a fifty fifty as to whether or not the race uh, is gonna the race is gonna fire off the rocket or not and you get traded one for one. I'm gonna but check I mean, the well, mod because I don't want to feel like I'm lying to you, but I'm almost one hundred and fifty percent confident it was a full blind to head tap through the raise rocket. Well, speaking of fully blind, Tiny and Chris M were on that B side hit. Savo now having to try and flush out anyone towards heaven. He forces out two and he gets those two. But does he expect the third? Does he expect Dino still here? He does, but he doesn't get the kill. The showstopper out for Bondo in a 1v3. Dino backing up eventually goes down. It's the lockdown out for Nader and he doesn't get the kill required. It's a third round, 9 3, now going the other way, this time for GCU as we swap sides. Well, we saw the 9-3 last time around paying off for the Huskies. Or, sorry, for the, the winner of the half, right? We saw it, you know, it, it was it was tough, but you got the results you wanted at the end of the day. It was whoever was able to get that first nine rounds. The curse did not resolve the way that you would have hoped. So for the Huskies here, yes, it's a 9-3 curse, but we've already seen it doesn't always stay true to its word. Right? And I believe, if I remember correctly, in fact, even on that 9-3, the Huskies weren't able to get their pistol round. So we can only hope for that for their sake. They get what's, they get what's due uh, and get this pistol for themselves so that hopefully they can carry that momentum forward and avoid uh, you know, the, the absolute worst case scenario here going on to this half switch. Yeah, they did find the first pistol round in this map. Uh, yeah, no, I, that's what I'm saying is on the ascent, they weren't able to get their pistol after going down 9-3. So if they can do the same to GCU, I think they can prevent anything crazy from happening. Yeah, I, I, that's entirely fair. Savo looked up towards mid as the rest of the team looking towards a outright C hit. There's no KJ utility here. It's just the body of Nader, which I think is actually huge in, in determining how this round goes. Chris M gets the tags. Bondo with the trade. The spike goes down. Bondo looking to plant for a mound. It's solid. The, oh, the paint shells barely miss. As now as the plant's gone down, it's a wrap from Savo trying to get anything done. He's, he would be able to find Matt. If Matt just plays a little bit slower here, thanks to this dark cover. Oh, Matt walks in. Senja finds a kill. Tiny goes down. Savo gets one. It's all full mayhem. Molly comes out. Senja get the snake bite. And the nano swarm on the spike. The trades happen all throughout mound. And it's a pistol for Keanu, just as you said. Well, there you have it, folks. Now, if everything's to believe, be believed, GCU will pull off a miracle comeback for about six rounds, and then Huskies will take it. So let's just see if that actually ends up occurring. Uh, or, oh, hear me out. Oh. Keanu, oh. Because, because of that map break that they had, they ate, they ate their Subway, they ate the, the meatball subs, the steak and cheese, the, the chicken Caesar. All three, whatever. why not? At the same time. Yeah, they, I, you know what? Bondo... Bondo, I Bondo's a little. He's a little big. I think he could. I think he could do it if he if he's like real hungry. You you, know? it, it's funny you say that because I'm almost confident it's it's uh, it's Bo- it's Blackmore that's mucking three subs in one sitting. If I know anything about so? this team, it's gonna be it's gonna be Eb. That's putting that on. Okay. Okay. Eb the sub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sub eating subs. That's right. The sub. The sub eating okay. sub. Yeah. Okay. I believe. Blind coming but, down B main, that's going to slow down the Huskies a ton here on this push. Yeah, it's in, it's an anti-eco, but wait a minute, GCU forced into this. So you see a bunch of stingers out, Frenzy on Volt here. So if rumors are to be believed, and Keanu do actually choose to hit the A site here as they pass through Bondo. He, he, hear me out. They, 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 go through B, they go B the secret. They have to go B I the secret. They, they have don't. to. They but, don't. But they, they have don't. to. They committed A. But they, they have committed to. A. They committed A already, Zeddy. Senja moving in through a tree. It's numbers in favor of GCU. They weren't expecting the force by Tiny trying to get anything done. But there's a wrap. There's a wrap they don't see from Nader. Tiny on the Guardian trying to get it done. They're able to find Dino pushing out Main. They know Nader's there. Tiny's oh so low. 
The last one in tree, it's just Sype versus Senja. Sype takes it. It's a force buy that pays off for GCU. They get a force. See, 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 this is this is why, this is why they gotta be hearing me through the mic right now as I'm streaming, because I have the reads, okay? You pull that rotation to A as soon as you commit that smoke, you know they're on an eco, you know they're gonna fast rotate, and then you muscle through secret onto B and you force them to retake on B. It's gotta be one of the most uncomfortable scenarios as a defender, is trying to retake on this pit of a site. Uh I think I think if they just make the call to bust through secret right there, they actually have that round firmly in the bag but unfortunately they're stuck too true to what they wanted to accomplish and now on their eco they're going to try to force them their way through onto this b site I, I think this makes sense b is actually moderately easy to retake especially once you have those weapons advantage so if dino pushes through the smoke ends up finding the shorty he could get something done instead Sype just looking to get three nothing nothing too serious just a calm 3k on the specter it's savo in towards mound, doesn't even stop to get the orb. He's looking for a plant and a plant only. I think that alarm bot calls it off though. Now a swing out from door. It's they're collapsing in towards mound. Savo on the rotate here. He's alone and Matt's already got his cross. They're pinching in on him. Oh. Savo just trying to run, can't get anything done. Senja 1v5. Ghost. Oh, he's able to find that first onto Matt. Okay. Just looking for some kills. Is Senja five bullets left in the chamber? The Bucky out for Dino. It doesn't matter. It's a fifth round for GCU. Yeah, I I mean, it's an eco. <laughs> you do what you can. It was an eco of all time. Yeah, it was one of the ecos of all time. Now I hear what you're saying about B. And I agree that in a buy round where you have utility available to you, yes, your utility can get a ton of value on it because the space is so contained. But on a save where you're just rocking with a pistol, I don't think retaking B is even an option, right? Everything in this game is contextual. And I, I think on a round, like some round, a B retake makes perfect sense. On other rounds, it is completely out of the question. So unfortunately, the Huskies, I think, just kind of got their I's and their T's flipped and they went wrong site on the wrong time and then forced on to be when they didn't have the resources to do it and now you know on their first full buy round here playing into what's kind of a bonus for grand canyon hopefully they'll be able to you know clean things up and and bring them back to where they need to be yeah i i, I agree with that sentiment in it's entirely bondo trading out some utility here i think this is this is pretty good early rounds early days for round number 16 here on map two piano <clears throat> really don't want to blow a 9-3 lead especially when you saw your opponents up 9-3 on the exact map beforehand Savo with Tiny and Chris M in tow just trying to get something out Bondo Ooh. diligent as ever on the C site he's able to open up the C site here draw some rotation but look at GCU they're already rotating I feel like the Huskies I mean, are, are, are walking right into the stacked retake and GCU might have a timing for this you're thinking, but the oh the smoke's not good for water. There's a gap in that. If that gets exploited, Bondo towards CT. Matt with the nade can't flush out Bondo just yet. Bondo's able to find sight despite the trade on the tiny, but good utility forces Bondo to go down. Chris M and Senja, the anchors, the two dependable smokes players for this team, are able to keep numbers in their favor. As now it's just Dino one v three. Tag up onto Savo. Jump over by Chris M and two HP makes the difference yeah i was i was gonna be really worried for the huskies even if chris ends up going down on that round that puts such you know a, a, a so much damage into their economy i feel like you know it, it's really really crucial that they not only won that round but they got to carry over as many guns as they did because now the only person forced to save on this round is tiny and he's got his ultimate senja's one off of his ultimate chris m is one off of his ultimate not just so that's going to be too much of a difference maker you have bondo's alt so you're on this like kind of carryover round where you can reserve a lot of your resources and if you're able to use those ultimates effectively you can totally decimate gcu's economy going into this last round i think that's why they're basically forced to call a timeout here because they need that extra time to say how are we going to deal with four ultimates and full rifles on basically our last round of the half to make a difference 
Yeah, it's it's really tough, especially because you don't have. I mean, you should you should have a couple you should have a couple weapons. I think yeah, the economy is. They've they've carried wrong. over every. I'm looking at it right now. They've carried over every rifle, and they're one away from Matt's ultimate on the race. But outside of that, what yeah. like how are you gonna deal with the dogs, the the vipers pit, and the rocket coming at you? Like I said, on basically a must win round for GCU. Yeah, it's it's not looking too too great at this point. GCU having to get a lot done here in round 17 to try and keep their names in the game of Lotus, try and take this series 2-0, try and prevent this from going to a map 3. I mean, that's the that's the grace of winning the first map, is, is you get that buffer. You get that buffer of a map. It puts your opponents on the back foot, but Senja, towards A, just absorbing, taking all of this A-side aggression into his palm. Matt cooking up a push. Off the side of this guiding light, the Seekers have come out, and the Showstopper as well on that B side. Oh. Essentia wins his fight. Eventually gets traded out by Volt. It's a from the shadows. It's a double flank here from the side of GCU. Volt as well as Sype. They've moved in. They've got main all under control. Chris M doesn't spot Nader. Nader eventually gets traded out. Volt and Dino alone, 2v2. Bondo and Chris M both towards heaven to plant the spike. It's a tag out from Chris M onto Volt. Dino's able to get the pick, 1v1. Does he know where Bondo is? Yes, he does. The tap comes through. So does the paint shells. Dino's forced off. Low HP. If Bondo Ooh. gets the swing, he does. It's a shot through the wall on the head. Bondo. Secures a 12th piano match point. I mean, Looking I don't I, I don't know why I'm screaming when you're killing a 23 HP target with no armor and you've got a full rifle playing in heaven. It's not that exciting. I just love the the micro movement of like the dead like the, the dead zoned bullet wall bang headshot for the kill. Like that looks good. It doesn't matter what the circumstance. That looks good. That's a nice yeah, shot. That, that looked clean, <laughs> as the kids say. Clean, crispy insane and now as we move to match point it's an eco out for gcu forcing out whatever little tiny bullets they have left in the clip matt cooks up a showstopper gets immediately traded out it is chris m that gets taken out so that's that smokes gone you only have senja <coughs> remaining that's why you see him move that toxic orb that poison orb in towards stairs bondo now following that trailblazer into the back of the site nader hasn't been spotted out in hut as the paint shells and the boom bot allow him to dive in. Now Nader's position has been revealed. The guiding light does flash him, although briefly. Bondo spray transfer gets three. He's on for the ace. The Seekers have been called out as well. Senja with the Viper's Pit does get tagged up bit by bit. There's a shadow step around main. Volt spamming in. Bondo with the plant. Sype with the tag. Senja. 1v2 turned 1v1, has to clutch. Viper's Ooh. pick up Sype with the spam around the side. Gets Senja down. It's now a sixth available for GCU. Barely clinching the round, keeping their life in this game. I have no... Uh, there wasn't even a doubt in my mind that Keanu had that round one. They have the Viper's ult. They have full guns into the opposing eco. They got the first pick of the round. They took the entire A site, and all they had to do was paint their post plan, and somehow... GCU pulled that one out of the hat for, for the round victory. I mean, Sype is playing a really, really solid game right now. Yeah, Sype. And a, a kind of rock for this team. Went a little bit under the radar, I think, on Ascent, just because everyone was talking about Matt. But now moving into this round, Chris Adam and Bondo able to find Sype. We were just talking about him. He overstepped the mark just a little bit. Is now this round... Looking ever so open. Door's been opened. Dino goes down. Volt able to find one, but no more. Nader. 2v4. He takes the swing in. Chris M goes down. Locked down as well in tow. Tiny on the ghost. Matt turns the flash. Savo with one. Nader 1v2. He goes down. Savo secures map two for Keanu. We're going to map three, Zeddy. Don't ask me to explain what just happened. I, I, I can't. I can't, because I'll, I'll try as I much as I, and I can't. The, the ants came marching out of B main. Mm -hmm. On the round, on a must-win round for GCU, the ants came marching out of B main, one by one, taking insane gunfights, winning some of them, somehow, 
And it actually looked losable for the Huskies right up until it was over. I, 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 I'm having a very difficult time breaking down how these teams are playing into each other. I can't tell if it's nerves. I can't tell if it's stress. I can't tell if it's, uh, you know, too much caffeine and the Red Bulls they're sucking back before they're jumping into these games. I don't know what it is. Maybe they just have crazy reads about he how each other wants to play. They're seeing something that I'm not seeing, but uh, just absolute chaos on that game too. And I'm really, really hoping for everybody's sake, mine included, that game three starts to stabilize a little bit so we can find some peace and tranquility and how these sight hits are, are taken off. Because right now, I, I mean, just crazy. I think it's a case of the Mondays. It's a case of the Mondays. That's a, it's a case of the Mondays. It's a, good, it's a case of the Mondays. We'll add that to the, the list of descriptions for this game. We've got the, the little boom bot that could. It's a case of the Mondays. It's a Subway sandwich angle. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a messy little game here tonight on the NACC Champions uh, Pacific West Division. 100%. But again, before we go into map three, we have a quick break for you. We'll be right back with NECC Valorant Keanu versus Green Canyon University.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Zeddy. I'm joined by Ancient Angel, and we are now on map number three. The Keanu Huskies face off against Grand Canyon University here, and we're taking to bind some good old classic crazy, crazy gunplay here on bind. 100%. I just want to mention, this is, I think, in terms of rules... I think this is one of Kiano's most comfortable maps. Yes. When we look at, at the, the team comp we have, we have Savo back on this chamber. This is what he thrived on in 2022 when chamber was like heavily in the meta and you could run chamber on just whatever map you wanted. It was This was Savo's playground. And now we see Senja, you know, still on that Viper, I think still putting in good work. Bondo on the raise. I'm expecting him to drop like 96, you know, like just going absolutely <sighs> crazy. Um... And Chris M, still on those smokes, dependable as ever. And Tiny now, again, on this guy, he looks good. He looks solid. And the other thing as well is I think this is a nice change of pace from the, the Yoru comp that we would typically see out of Keanu for this for this stage of, of seeing the the like the Yoru raise. I, I don't think that Keanu necessarily had a super drilled game plan with that comp, but with this one, you have so many VODs to look through for it. You have so much going in that now heading into this pistol, Zeddy, you want to you wanna take us through it? Yeah, I, I think, you know, based off what you're saying about character comfort, I think really the only person that's, like, off a main agent is Senja. He plays the Viper, but it's something he's really kind of had to learn for, um, you know, some of these maps. But already this super fast lurk as four people start rotating through, and Dino's going to find one onto Bondo. Chris and the Chris M. Yeah, Chris M. Immediate trade there. Spike going down on the B site, Savo. Alone here. Three headhunter bullets to his name. So potential for three different bodies to be found. Oh, does get spotted out just barely. And Sight able to find that kill. Leaves Chris M, Tiny, and Senja alone in this retake. 3v4. The sides have completely swapped. Sky Smoke down. It's the last one remaining. The guiding lights have been dueled out. The jump from Sight finds Chris M, Tiny, and Senja though. Oh my goodness! Senja from Hookah finds two and is able to deliver a pistol round from nowhere for Keanu. That was a really awkward retake. I, I, I think that dog uh, coming out onto Savo uh, from Volt was just so so good from him getting that 30 damage tag was like actually so instrumental in that round especially being the pistol round where you're already weak and you're not really buying up armor uh, it was it was really really well done to get the like the last tick of the dog i'm pretty sure it was just about to despawn uh, for that to come out and as soon as that hit onto savo came through um and you know that first uh, that first trade coming out from dino like dino being able to find that first pick of the round i thought the huskies were toast to be perfectly honest but i, I really i think it just came down to to better gunplay there they really just played their fights oh my oh, god the force comes through and bondo finds two gcu down to three chris m they line up for him as well he's able to find two Savo with his headhunter picks out a couple shots onto dino dino's on what is that like three hp that's, uh, it's some, gotta be something, something like that let's hide over there oh okay angel oh i called I, it i, I called you. it three hp you know see listen the eyes the eyes of a falcon that's what i've got Savo just peeking in towards short tiny playing in towards this triple box now <coughs> looks more like a tetris piece with that recent extension or you know extension from a couple months ago not too have recent. you been following the tetris meta no 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 no. um the, the this block like this little shape on vine uh, oh. used to just be it used to just be three boxes and now they, like, i thought you were giving over. me like up-to-date statistics on like the development of the professional tetris meta and I was... no, if you're talking about the tetris meta then that's called a j block ah because um, it looks like a j but instead tiny just gets the frag onto dino to close it out it's a pretty clean anti-eco three alive for the side of the huskies so was there a footstep there like how did tiny just know to throw his flash because i don't think savo saw him in his in his line of sight uh tiny's him oh okay yeah, yeah. that makes sense i mean yeah. i mean i'm not i'm not going to debate that i just i don't know if that's you know uh, legally sound and and statistically uh, I'm a, I'm a viable lawyer. evidence i'm a but... tolerant lawyer you're a val you're a valorant lawyer oh okay i'm a valorant excellent. lawyer excellent yeah he's him that's the your honor uh that's my defense. It works. It works. You go into a Valorant lobby and you say that and you tell me that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That's, you're not wrong. 
I'm not at all. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Tiny on the fastest flank of the universe. Yeah, Tiny just just not caring. He's he's ready for it. Stipe and Senja. A duel in towards that ramp. Oh it goes Senja's way. Chris Emin Bondo able to take another piece of this pie. It's a really, really big full eco for GCU. That force buy did not pay off at all. And Tiny again. The in attacker spawn at this point, man. They have the Spectre out behind the last two players of GCU. They find the first. The Trailblazer in for the second. Chris M looking to farm up this orbital strike. Instead, oh no, it is it is Chris M to get that second pick. And it's a flawless anti-eco. I so hear me out. The the real the real I'm him play is to keep your knife out there, go for the scale up, and go for back-to-back -back knife kills. Because there's no way anybody's reading that timing from Tiny. I'm watching him do it, and I'm impressed by the amount of time he's generating on that rotation. I just, I want to see, I want to see the I'm him moment so early on into the game. Because how do you recover, like, mentally after getting knifed, double knifed, out, out a, a short on round three? I don't think you can. I think you just, it's, it's tossed, right? It's chalked. I, I think maybe, maybe at that point... I think it's so absurd that you just kind of get over it because you're like, what What just happened? Like, erm, what the flip, guys? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, But instead, we just see Keanu opt for this B stack. I think they have a little bit of info because of that Trailblazer, and that's exactly what we see as Nader and Sype in towards Hookah. Sm the Sky Smokes, maybe from Chris M. He's just playing around. And we see as these guiding lights come through, as this sight hit, may about... May maybe just about getting ready to take place. That's the orb grabbed on long. It's a teleport towards A. It's to try and pull any rotations off, but Kiana are just not biting. The trust in Savo is there. They're waiting for contact. No, actually, Sype is ready to rotate off, and the rotations are coming through. Vader has to fall back now. Bondo and Savo deep, deep in the site here. The satchel's out. Bondo just turns his back. It doesn't matter. Matt can't cook up a thing on that lamps push. The incendiary comes out. Sight planting towards truck. Volt now tucked in towards that triple area. As Nader able to find Chris M. But is Nader able to find Senja here? We're yet to know. Tiny jumping around through lamps. It's a retake. Happening in about five seconds. Savo swings out to Volt. Bondo has to trade it. Tiny goes down by Sype. Senja just trying to dance around short. Sype finds Bondo. It's a 1v2 for Senja. Controller on controller against controller here. Dino spams him out. It's finally a round that goes the way of GCU, but it's a costly one. Yeah, it, it took a lot out of them. And the Huskies, I mean, they were still rocking some Spectres and Deagles. It looked like they hadn't really committed to the full buy because Savo was saving for this Operator, which he now has online here. You know, 0-2 right now, but hopefully the big funny gun will will, will change that up for him in, in the near future. Uh, it was a really well-played take by GCU, the way that they used the Sky Audio to bait and tried to leave Nader on that Lurk, uh, you know, forcing some extra members up short. But I feel like where the Huskies really had some opportunities was I don't think they realized how much control they generated through Lamps on that push. Like, they had so much... Uh, I think it was a two, it was like a three versus one that they had the capacity to force through lamps and they never capitalized and, and they got punished for it. They did. That's they got, big there punished. for Chris though. I don't know if you saw that. That was, that was huge. Bondo gets spammed out with that judge. The orbital strike not going Keanu's way either. Matt at a measly five HP now getting healed up. Finally, Tiny immediately on this wrap through showers trying to buy a little bit of time, a little bit of info. Two players <coughs> here on the B site to receive. It's Savo on this op. Matt, no satchels in hand, so no dive ability into this site. It just has to be a jump out. It's a funnel out. Savo re-peeking. Be careful. Orbital strike comes out by the side of Chris M, but Senja deep in the back site. His wall goes down. Volt gets taken down. Senja on the flick find site. It's a 1v3 for little old Dino. He finds Savo. It's now a 1v2. If Tiny gets caught out here, it could mean disastrous consequences for Keanu. You don't want to go 3-2 here. Dino, yet to clear anyone. It's really deep holds. It's really passive holds. You want to make sure that Dino has to be planted. 
He can't have his hand on his gun. There's the plant. It comes through. The trailblazer to follow as Senja reloads. Dino takes towards elbow. Tiny knows this. Senja on the hold. The flash comes through, but it flashes Senja. The team flash. Oh no, Dino with the 3k, the 1v3 clutch. That's that's insane. Uh, I, I don't quite know how Savo got beat out on site. I mean, he's offing so well. He's absolutely controlling Dora I, or Hookah. And I know at one point, you know, he went for the quick flick and I think he got caught in the movement animation because he wasn't able to stick the shot. But I have no idea how Dino was able to win that 1v1 on him wrapping out of Garden. That that to me is, is, is a mind-blowing kill. Uh, you know, for GCU, and, and they're going to pay pay off heavy from that as Dino already has his ultimate available, and they're going to be able to force up uh, on uh, the free operator for Nader going into the next round. Senja has one as well. Oh my god! Just W keying, takes that Viper's Pit out of the round. That's the top fragger for GCU. Dino, who's been playing excellently throughout this series, goes down. It's a big fragger to lose. Senja... Getting ready to try and delay this hit for as long as he can. The paint shells, the boom bot, the trailblazers out from each side. Stunned up is Senja. Now oh. Senja still is able to find one while stunned. Oh! And Bolt not able to get anything done just yet. Senja trying to get a third. It doesn't come through. Sype gets two. Bondo with one. Stabilizes. 1v2. It's another clutch for a player of GCU. This time on the side of Nader. If he pushes through the smoke, he'll be able to find out. Chris M, the smoke comes down. Nader found out. Too low. Chris um, takes him out for Furkiano. Okay. Let's do another trivia probability question. What's okay. the probability of being concussed uh -huh. in tube, yeah. holding B site yeah. solo, uh, and finding yeah. two and a half kills for yourself in a okay. 1v3? Okay. We're, we're making this sound a little too juicy here, Zeddy. Okay. <laughs> the first one, he was concussed. Absolutely. And that's not, it's not too great. But, you know, it's only, it's only it, you know, I'd rather be stunned than flashed. You know what I mean? I feel like, like I'm getting um, um, actually on stream right now. Let yeah, me generate um, my content, okay? Let yeah, me make my, um, let me say my bait, and then we leave it yeah. at that. Okay, I mean, <laughs> I think you're baiting a little too hard here. You're baiting like some of the silvers in my ranked games right now. <laughs> the, first, the first shot was crazy. Can we at least accept that? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. The first shot was insane. Oh, God. For after that, Senja's just being him, you know? <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> and now we see as this long scale comes in, Salvo and Nader having this little micro 1v1 chamber v chamber here. Nader peeks in. It doesn't matter. Salvo gets it. Chris Sam able to find one. Senja able to find one as well. This is an anti eco that is looking to be near flawless for Keanu. Chris Sam pushing out. It's two on the swing. Tiny. Oh my goodness. Tiny and Bondo clean it up. It's a team ace. It's a flawless. It's everything and more. Keanu on five. Yeah, I mean, that was just clinical. Senja is just playing an absolutely phenomenal game right now. He's really found a way to, like, turn this Viper into the Sentinel that, you know, he's been playing all year long ever since May with the team before they roll swapped and put him back on initiator. You know, it's it, it, like he's, he's found a way to really come into his own on this Viper and getting some really, really important defensive round kills. You know, he's maybe that offensive lurk. We're still getting there, you know, getting to that point where we can really have those really heavy impact frags, those first bloods. Uh, but on defense, I mean, he's got it locked down. That B site looked untouchable, and it was. They absolutely decimated uh, any attempt from GCU to try to break through Hookah there. The Viper's Pit was just way, way too strong to deal with. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people I, maybe might sleep on when it comes to Senjon the Viper. Because like Senjon Viper, this will this has never been done before. Why Senjon Viper? Why not move it Chris M? Why not something? When you look at the teams and, and generally within team comps, who plays the Viper? It's one of two players. It's either the Sentinel player who's playing Viper, or it's the Flex player or the Initiator player who's playing Viper. And that's. <laughs> Time to mobilize my pack. Hawk out! Blinded! I'll get him. It's a great pick for him. It's something that, you know, at first this was a little bit, it took a little bit of work to 
to kind of add it to the roster. It wasn't it wasn't a, a main agent for him, but he's been able to find some really good success with it on some really important maps. I mean, we've seen him picking it up on Lotus last Launching map, and smoke. again here on Bind on Viper Duty. It's been, it's been very good for him so far. Down and out. Taken down. Stim Beacon down. Talks the screen down. Talks and screen down. Thirty seconds left. My ult's not ready. Uh, I, uh, honestly, I think that's probably the right move. Like, if they decide to stick to this plant on A, they'll get the bomb down, sure. But trying to play post plant and the Spike opposing planted. team has full control of showers. Like, look, they've already walked out. They already have sight again. You're you're cornered into U-Haul and Heaven, and while this Heaven push definitely smart, is it enough to Look win out. this round two v four? It's it looks Kill really really in. doomed for GCU right One now. One enemy oh. remaining. Right here. Yeah, that, right here. that's something, one of the golden rules that you learn about Vine very on, it doesn't really matter what rank you are uh, or how much experience you have at the game. The golden rule about Vine defense is whoever wins showers when wins the A site. Like, it's so difficult to defend against, uh, you know, a, a opponents that have control of both short and sh showers, but it's even harder to hold a post plant against your opponents when they have that control of showers. They have that TP pressure. They have the ability to flood out from showers. You you just cause so much so much chaos on site, and it's difficult to hold a post plant position that defends showers that isn't there. also close to shit. Uh, I feel like it's a husky. Spike down A. Smoke's down. Needs to be aware. Smoke top and a backstab that really could be taken on to him. Last player standing. Here. Here. Yeah, I'll be honest. I was really paying attention to that short fight that I didn't even realize Here. that you know four people were just dead on B. Like that was that was kind of quick and kind of insane. Uh, really, really messy to start things off here in this map. Chris, you know, I think he okay. had the right idea on that timing, but just unfortunately not being able to find that spray control uh, to stick that kill here. onto Matt really spelt the doom. Uh, there for the Huskies, uh, you know, but then yet again, here we are on a map where GCU should be winning their attacking half and the Huskies are coming out strong. So, uh, you know, map number one looked a little Drop rocky, but I feel up. like they've really pulled it back uh, coming into map two and three of the series. Oh, I didn't even realize he bought a judge on his alt round. Oh my God. <laughs> the judge chamber. I like that. Spike down, B. Teleport's ready. Thirty seconds left. Oh, there's one. Spike down B. Zero zero. Welcome to my world. 
Sky! Out of charge. Spike planted. Fire in the hole! Last player standing. Oh, definitely, and I have to say, you know, we've been we've been being pretty critical of, you know, both teams' plays so far. But sometimes it's important to recognize when teams are doing really good things. And I really liked the way Dino played that post plant for GCU. You know, he knows that boxes are going to get cleared. He knows that there's a judge in the hands of that chamber, and he doesn't want to take that close range fight. So to play that off angle behind tube, yeah, you have the Viper's goggles. You know, you're you're chilling in the ultimate a little bit. But I still that think works. that intelligence to take that really advantageous fight was just made it so Most difficult down. for Savo in a situation that arguably based off of health could have been pretty playable. Hey, Sky's out. <laughs> what? Planted. Last player standing. <laughs> Last round before the switch. I mean, I mean, you always want that round. I'm, I'm just blown away yeah. by how that last round played out. Uh, that first kill onto. Oh, hold on. We're calling a timeout on round 11. All right, fair enough. We're gonna let the players talk through the talk uh, as they get ready for that next round. Uh, but I guess you, you know what I think really blew my mind there was that hookah battle. Yes, it's good micro from Matt. Can't take that away from him. But we literally saw him peek through the doorway, and. It was, I think it was the the wall bang through crate that reduced the headshot damage because I'm pretty sure that was a 148 dink onto Matt. And that's, like, I'm I'm kicking rocks after that, I swear. Like, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm putting my fist through my monitor if I lose out on a, on a wall bang through crate against an opponent that's crouch walking headshot me with a phantom. I'm, I'm actually losing my mind. That's, it's really, really unlucky. Uh, for that round to start off like that and, and then for him to get yet another kill and not die on 2 HP with no healer left. I mean uh, What are you gonna do? A gift Got your trail. That's a lot. Spike planted. Oh no! Wow.
Switching yeah, they've sides. done a really good job of, of finding their momentum on the latter half of... Why do I always do this? The latter half of the half. I I, I put myself in these boxes, man. I'm playing. I'm, class, I'm casting Cod, I say points on the point. I'm casting Val, I say half on the half. It, it is what it is. The latter, the latter third of the half. They did a good job of restabilizing, but I think, you know, some of these rounds are just little misjudgments from the Huskies where... You know, they know better, and I feel like they're still doing it anyways. Like, you know that Operator is there, and you know that it's going to go one of two places, right? It's basically going to go B-Long, or it's going to go Hookah. And I feel like we're still giving away really early kills very early on in the round uh, to that those pieces of utility that you're, you're almost certain of how they're going to be utilized. And it's just, it, it, you're kind of going into the rounds at a deficit because you're playing into exactly what the enemy wants from you. I think this orb is going to go to Tiny. If I if I know this team, and I do, I'm pretty sure they're trying to feed this orb to Tiny. But they might actually look like they're going to look for a pick on site first before they fall back to the orb. Spike dropped. Thirty seconds left. Pull cat! Launching smoke! Oh my gosh. Ten seconds left. Spot planted. Pull cat! Blinded. Heal up, squad. Last player standing. Slide diffused. Yeah, I mean, really, really well played from GCU. They held their ground very well. Uh, Bondo getting picked off so early in that round was unfortunate. I think it was, yeah, a spam kill um, that took him. And I, I think there was almost too much attention put on that chamber utility. Like, once you spot out the chamber, and you, like you said, you have the ability to play that fast TP rotate, I, I almost wonder if you just commit to that teleport play a little bit earlier. Uh, you know, you grab your orb for tiny, and then you just play for momentum. It is the pistol round. You do want those close range fights, and when you know that they have control of Hookah with the chamber positioned with, you know, the, the free guardian, it's a little bit tricky uh, to kind of hustle your way through that. So I would have liked to see a faster with it. Nice butter, shot baby. from Chris. It's exactly what they're gonna do. Thirty seconds left. It's gotta go back to B. He has to go back to B. I I, I just Gun don't here. understand what made Bondo push. He had U haul. Gun here. Ten seconds left. He had U haul. He could have literally just sat in U haul with the shorty. And I think he has it. Planted. 
Oh, so close. I, I, he was trying to go for that shorty flank, but I think if the call was just to get your pick and then rotate back to A, if he just sits there, he finds two on the round, right? You take out, you take out um, Dino, you take his gun, and then all of a sudden there's a constant pressure on any rotation through CT. It, it was, it just looked like they were on the same page about what they wanted to do, whether they wanted to go back to A or to B. And I, I think if they were a little bit more committed to that A rotate, uh, that play would have gone phenomenally well. I need to <clears throat> blow something up. right now either last player standing one enemy I remaining out of charges <laughs> did you see our faces wait did he not have time to run into the teleporter there knife out I feel like if he knifes out, runs into the TP, he can save his gun. Mesdames, Messieurs, the Spike. <laughs> Here. No, I've definitely done that in my Silver 2 rank game, so I know for a fact that that timing exists. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, anyways, I, I, I think... I think the way that round started off, Bondo did a really, really good job of, of, of finding that first pick. And you could argue that that second kill was a bit of an overheat, but I actually think it was kind of tactical. What I think needed to happen is that the site players needed to lock down Hookah a lot faster and give Savo the time for that rotation to come through. Because he had them dead to rights, but they were allowed to break through Hookah and it ruined the entire flank timing. There. Uh, I think I think this is give Chris M an orb out B long and then fake the hit B hit into A. Is that's the read I'm making? But this time they actually do it because the last time they said they were gonna do it, they did it. But this time they're gonna do it because that's I'm asking spike. really nicely. I've got your 30 seconds left. Yes. Ah, Come ah. on. Molly. Last player standing. Spike down B. 10 seconds left. So, you want to hear you want to hear the, the 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 rationale. This is this is the vibe. Okay, you've already pulled those rotations. You can even throw the raise nade just to make it look like you're committing raise nade and maybe a brimstone or two. You can commit whatever you need to commit to pull that rotation. But as soon as you throw pass through that TP, Tiny just walks up to the entrance of short and dogs the chamber off the angle. It doesn't matter if he's offing. If he's in a four v one, he's getting run down by all of that sky utility. And they had the setup. They had the rotations. They had the utility. They had absolutely everything they needed for that play to work. And yet again, they committed onto the site and got punished and i just i want to see that adaptation it's what this map is designed for is that adaptation
I think that's the little boombot that did. I, I that's the little boombot that sh that could it tried, attempted, and succeeded. Yeah, I... That was their save. Here. Here. It is what it is. This needs to be the round where they just commit to the fact that this map has teleporters and I'm going to use them to win rounds instead of just having them bite me in the butt. Because that's what's that's what these teleporters have been used for so far, is just getting backstabbed through yeah. hookah. And it needs to result in something more. They need to be implemented or utilized effectively as an attacking tool. Uh, whether it's whether it's A short pressure into B hit or or that oh, A long or that B long pressure that they've been succeeding at creating every down. single round and translating into a kill, it needs to result into something. <laughs> Definitely doable, stick. definitely Hostile winnable, device. and I think they're in a really good spot to close this one out. They're, they they need to just keep up that pressure on showers and on D-Long. And I, I, think, I think, for me, what I'm noticing here as I'm watching this is that GCU is doing a very good job of controlling and containing Hookah and a very good job of controlling A short, but they're super weak on extremities. And what's more I'm important is that there are teleporters located on both of those extremities. If you can bait your opponents into committing to that hard flank out, out showers and then crunching them through B teleport, or better yet, using that B teleport to rotate into A when you're pulling those rotations through CT, there's so many options that you have on this map. If you start use a lot, utilizing those resources effectively, it was a great round last round off of gunplay alone, but I want to start seeing them using this map for what it is. There. Screen down. Holy smoke. Whoa. down feet. Whoa. We're driving blind. We got the blindfold on. I'm pretty sure didn't didn't Tiny throw out a flash that hit like three people? Did they spam? They might have just spammed the flash on audio. That works. Oh, I know no one checked it, but they th I think the reason the kills came out as quickly as they did was because I think they were spamming the flash off audio, and the huskies were just late to react. I I, I don't know what the column was there, but that's a good spot. Holy 
Charlie. Here. One enemy remaining. Last player standing. I need a second to just breathe and think through it. I'm looking at these rounds, and I'm just like, man, how are we going up two agents every single time and just not locking it down? I, I, I'm thinking, like, like, what is GCU doing that's just totally destroying the setup? And I really feel like Volt and Dino are just m using utility in such intelligent ways that they've really just created these really really difficult to break through trap setups uh, on the huskies they're putting them in situations where they're basically forced to eat their utility and, and we're not adapting and it's 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 hurting bad uh bleeding out rifles in that last round like really really sucks for our economy okay. I've got your trail. Last player standing. Spike Next down, shot. B. Team Ace. <clears throat> Match point. I'm looking at the economy. I'm trying to do some math. And the math just ain't mapping into Nader's operator. That's all I can say. I, I, I really, I really don't know what the answer is here. You have, the, my, the, the best answer I've got is that you have the Viper ult, you have the Brim ult, your A hit actually looks good. But look at what GCU is doing. They know that. They know that their A hit looks good. And they've already stacked it with four members. And that Brim ultimate on U-Haul comes out way too early. Way too early and they're able to dodge it in its entirety. The clock is approaching midnight here for for Tiano. Three v five, tiny trying to recover any sort of chance into this game. Hawkeye blinded. Drop. to go towards B. It's a call to end this round here. No smoke on the site. And the operator... 30 seconds left. Oh! No! Defenders win. Wow. It was so bad, and then it was so good, and then it was done. Is is that's my that's my clinical assessment of that. It it it, it started off really 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 rough. You had. You got shut down in a short. They read, they stacked the site, they read the hit. The op 
does not come through for Nader. It doesn't result in anything, really, on that round at all. And yet, we're unable to capitalize. And it, it's, 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 it, I think, you know, there's some definitely some cleanup to do for the Huskies on their hits, for sure. But GCU played a really good game. I think Matt showed us, you know, what he's capable of, Ascent especially, just bringing in a really, really good uh, defending half for them on the Ascent. And then we saw, you know, on, on the Lotus that Dino can put, put stuff together, even on rounds where they're dropping rounds like crazy, they're still, he's still able to have an impact. And then going into this bind, just seeing all the, the havoc that Volt's able to create on this sky. I mean, three really strong players that top in the scoreboard here on this third map, uh, definitely deserve that position. You don't want to. You don't want to say that. Oh, Keanu had it. They just goofed up a few times. It definitely, you know, it's tough opponents that force you into those situations where you misplay. Right? They put them in those positions. They put them in those in those tough spots. Um, so kudos to our opponents, Grand Canyon University, on a very well performed uh, match here tonight in the NECC Champions Division. So many times it was the same, just orbital strike lamps, everyone, you know, double back up. And I think that that means something about the game and the next year. There's lessons to be learned from this for the Huskies. This was very well played by GCU, but there were so many misplays that Keanu had. There's so much, so much to learn. But I think that's going to be it from us here at the desk today, tonight. For NECC champions Valorant Zeddy, is there anything viewers should know about this upcoming week? They're Valorant fans. <laughs> this is about six different things they should know. Uh, so coming off of tonight, this was the NECC champions division week number three. So we'll be going in to continue the season with two more games next week against the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology and then rounding things out with California State University's Sacramento campus. Um, that's on the following Mondays, week after week. Uh, but tomorrow, we have our NACE LCQ match that got rescheduled for tomorrow. So this is the Huskies playoff run now in the NACE Star League Varsity Premier Division. They're going up against Kansas State University. So you're definitely not going to want to miss that one. 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night here on the Keanu Huskies channel. Then on Wednesday, the CVAL rescheduled game against Titan Esports Blue, which I believe is CSUF, California State University. I'm blanking on the F. I forget what it stands Fullerton. for. Say that again? Fullerton. That's the one, Fullerton. Fullerton Campus. Yeah, Fullerton. Uh, so that will be Wednesday night, also at 6.30 p.m. And the reason we had to reschedule that game is, of course, because this Saturday, the big ticket event, Red Bull Campus Clutch, Canadian Nationals, the finals, top 16 in the country. The Huskies did end up qualifying on the fourth qualifier in the final hour. We made it through. We snuck through the gate, and we're so happy to be here to represent Keanu uh, in our country's Red Bull Campus Clutch National Finals. And we are Red Bull sponsored. So, hey, if you want some free Red Bull, make sure you tune in, uh, not just online, but also if you're in the Fort McMurray area to come to our live in-person viewing and grab some free Red Bull and have a good time. That will be Saturday morning at 11 a.m. in the Doug Schmidt Lecture Theater on the second floor of the Clearwater Campus. So for more information, you can find the tweet on our Twitter page, uh, I'll also throw it in Twitch chat here before we round up for the night. All right. But that is before we round out for the night. But I think for now, that's it. We have nothing more for you tonight. All exciting stuff for Valorant fans, for Keanu Valorant fans throughout this next week. But nothing more tonight. We will see you all next time for some crazy Valorant 